you when you pick up your calculators. But today, I want you to pick up your calculators. Do this with your calculator. To do this, you hit 9, exponent button, bracket, 1 divided by 2, close brackets, equals. Do that for these three things. Go. 9, exponent button, open brackets, 1 divided by 2, close brackets, equals. What's the answer? Three. Now do it for 27 and 625. Some of you have already seen the relationship. Now. Okay. You're intelligent young people. You notice that three, nine, and an exponent, three, twenty seven, and an exponent, five, six, twenty five, and an exponent, all already have a relationship which you are aware of, yes? You all already know that 3 squared equals 9. You all already know that 3 cubed equals 27. And you all already know that 5 to the 4th equals 625, right? And, of course... You all already know that the square root of 9 equals 3. You all already know that the cube root of 27 equals 3. And, of course, you all already know that the fourth root of 625 equals 5. Right? Okay. Now you get to apply logic. If the square root of 9 equals 3 and 9 to the 1 half equals 3, then what do you know about the square root of 9? The square root of 9 and 9 to the 1 half. They're the same thing. So, you now know that 9 to the 1 half equals the square root, oops, equals the root of 9. Now, you are also aware that the way math people write numbers, we often leave stuff out because we are lazy. What number should be written here that we do not write? 2. What number should be written here that we do not write? One. One. Now you all know how to do exponents that are rational numbers because you can all quite plainly see there's a one there, there's a one there, there's a two there, there's a two there. Right? Easy peasy. The denominator becomes the index. The numerator becomes the power. problem. All right. No other new thing. Now, for some reason, this prints poorly. I don't know why it puts the B down there, here and here only. So we're going to write A right here.
point zero four to the three halves. Now, of course, I always say if you know what is actually happening, you can always work it out. But this doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? How can you have 0 0.4, 0 0.04 multiplied by itself three halves of a time? Right? It makes no sense, yes? Yes, but same thing. How, do you, how would you write that out? 0 0.04 squared, easy. 0 0.04 times 0 0.04, right? So, knowing what is actually happening, in this case, isn't very helpful. But we do know that that becomes the index. The base becomes the radicand, 0 0.04, and the power, the numerator becomes the power. Now listen to me carefully. Please notice this with the root of the base to the third power is exactly the same as the root of the base with the three under there with the radicand. These are exactly the same thing. Sometimes it is better to put the exponent under the radicand and sometimes it's better to leave it outside. Okay? The examples I have here for you today, so far, these six, you're going to want to leave it outside because that simplifies. Because, of course, that is the square root of four one-hundredths, right? And what is the square root of four one-hundredths? Two to the tenth cubed, which is, what's two cubed? Eight, what's ten cubed? One thousand. Which, in decimals that all of you like, point zero zero eight. Everybody cool? That's all there is to it. The exponent becomes the numerator, or the, ex, the denominator becomes the radicand, the numerator becomes the exponent. Yes. Yes, that works wonderfully if you have a nice perfect square there. Yes. But the problem with that, Roy, is if I ask you this, what is the square root of 0. 0.4? What is it? What's the square root of 0. 0.4? Right. Because it's death, but most kids say, well, it's 0. 0.2. But it's not, right? Or if I say this, what is the square root of 0. 0.004? What is it? No doesn't have a square root because that's four one thousandths yeah. right that's why i show the fractions all right so let's look at the next one which i'll do in red b 27 to the four thirds again awfully hard to write 27 times 27 four thirds of a time right so it becomes the cubed root of 27 to the fourth. Now, I've kept the four out here because this has a cubed root. All right? That's why we're doing it this way. What is the cubed root of 27? Three to the fourth power, which is? Really? Three times three is nine. 81. All right, good. Now... Do you get to forget all the rest of your math? No, which means you have two paths you can go by on letter C. Or to quote Led Zeppelin, you have two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road that you're on. 
I know deep, hey? All of you should listen to Led Zeppelin. That should be your real homework. Huh? Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven, Black Dog, Over the Hills and Far Away, nothing. Whole lot of love, Cashmere, nothing. Days and Confused, nothing. None of those songs mean any, none of those song titles mean anything to you. Heartbreaker, Live and Love and Made, Rock and Roll, The Immigrant Song, nothing. You know in the Thor song or the Thor movie, that song? Dun, 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 you don't know that song? song Immigrant that. song. Anyways, there are two paths you can go by. One, what do you do with those exponents? Multiply, right? Now, Roman, I'm going to take a long time to do this sentence so everybody's brain can turn on. Because when I ask this question, I'm going to hear too long of a silence. Okay? What's two times one third? Two thirds. That was too long of a silence. Right? Even though I did that whole long sentence to prepare people. And I set you up with what you do with these exponents. And everybody said multiply them. And then I kept talking and I still heard silence when I asked for two times one third. And I still heard silence. What I should have heard was so many voices that I couldn't pick who to give the gummy bear to. So that is eight to the two thirds. If you follow exponent laws, yes? Right? Which now means the cubed root of 8 squared, and the cubed root of 8 is? 2 squared, and 2 squared is? 4. The other path you could go by is from here, you know that 8 to the 1 third is the cubed root of 8, and then it's squared, and you get to the same answer. Because that's 2 squared, which is 4. And you can see that either path that you go will get you to the same spot. You make the decision. I, I. So let's do D. What is that? Seven times seven? Seven times seven is 49. That's not 49. 0. 0.7. Yes, you're absolutely right. It is 0. 0.7. Why? Okay, so the one half means I've taken the square root of 0. 0.49 to the one. And the square root of 0.49 is, of course, 49 over 100, which is, of course, 7 over 10, which is, of course, 0 0.7. All right, now, Nathan Punk has already given away how to do E because of what he was talking about in A. What's wrong with 1.5? It's a decimal. We know what to do when it's a fraction. So you got to convert it. So what is it? Nathan. Well, you could do 15 over 10. But why wouldn't you do 3 over 2? Which is the square root of 16 cubed, which is 4 cubed, which is 64. Nice job, Shayla. No silence there. Well played. Now do F while I drink my coffee. It 
81 to what fraction? 75 over 100, which you would never leave because Mrs. Bag Crumble would go eight. Three fourths. So that is the fourth root of 81 cubed. What is the fourth root of 81? Three cubed. What is three cubed? 27. Yeah? Now, remember when I said sometimes you leave the exponent outside and sometimes you bring it under the radicand, right? And up until now, we've left it outside, yes? Because the radicand works perfectly, agreed? Look at the next question. This means the fifth root of 8 squared, yes? Now, you're intelligent young people. Does 8 have a fifth root? No. no. What's the biggest root 8 has? A third root, and the answer is 2, right? So obviously this is irrational. Agreed? The fifth root of 8. And 8, well, that's just 2 times 2 times 2. I can't even get out a group of 5, can I? So in physics class, if you were pr faced with this, you would use a calculator. You would go 8, exponent button, bracket, 2 divided by 5, close brackets, equals. And you get a big barfy decimal. How do I feel about decimals? They're big and barfy. I don't want any part of them. They can piss off. So in this case, we bring that to under the radicand, and we now have the fifth root of 8 squared. What is 8 squared? So I now need the fifth root of 64. Now 64 happens to be 2 to the 6th. Can I get a group of 5 out of there? How many? 1. So I'm going to have 2, fifth root 2. That is your math class answer. Okay. Okay, now, this one, obviously it's very easy to calculate our answer, yes? What would I punch in? 0. 0.6, exponent button, bracket, 15 divided, 15 divided by 7, close brackets, equals. Yeah? Ease, bees, lemon, squeezy. For every class but math. In math class, that is... 0.6 seventh to the 15th, right? How many groups of seven can I get out of there if there's 15.6s under there? Two. Two. So it is 0. 0.6 squared, seventh root. What did I leave under there? 0. 0.6. Now, if we were really doing this, it would be 6 tenths squared, seventh root of six tenths. And if we were really doing that, it would be 36 one hundredths, seventh root of six over the seventh root of 10. Is that allowed? So we would rationalize it by multiplying it by the seventh root of 10 to the sixth. And we'd go all the way and go further, but we're not going to do that because that's way too far that we don't need to go today. Okay? Everybody cool? I need you to be able to work in both of these forms. You need to be able to understand that that too can be part of the radicand, and then we can sort it out that way. That's the whole point of it. Yeah? Yeah. Read that question. Read the word problem. I'll give you a moment to read it. Can I do A without a calculator? And the, answer, the question then becomes, why? Why? Why can I do A without a calculator? Nobody 
you can tell me why I can do A without a calculator? Uh, Roman? Can you just do the cube root of 27? Right. 27 has a cube root, so we can do this one, can't we? Yeah. So it would be 0 0.01, yeah, times 27 to the 2 thirds, which would be 0 0.01 times the cubed root of 27 squared, which would be 0 0.01 times what? Three. Three squared, which is nine. nine. So it would be 0 0.09 kilos. What about B? Can we do B without a calculator? If I want an actual answer, can I do B without a calculator? An answer that would make sense. No, because 200 doesn't have a cube root, does it? Could you, in math class, get an answer, but an answer that would make no sense to anybody? Yeah. Easily, right? So what would it be? 0 0.01 times 200 to the 2 thirds, which, if I want a real number, like, I shouldn't say uh, that, a real life number, I would have to do that with my calculator, yes? But in math class, that's 0 0.01 times the cube root of 200 squared. Now, since 200 doesn't have a cube root, what should I do with that squared? I should put it under there, actually square 200, factor it, bring out your pair or your groups of three and then multiply that by 0 0.01. But that would give me a number of like 75 cube root eight. Now, would you ever say that your, any part, any mass of your body was that? Of course not. You would give a number. Right? Like I would not say, for example, um, uh, one, one, 105. Uh, that won't work. I'm going to be on a uh, one dead, 55, or number to die, lock up the letter. I would never say that I weigh two root 55 pounds. Would I? Because that means nothing to any of us, right? Diapop is evil. No, diapop is evil because it fools your body. Your body thinks it's getting sugar and then often does the same thing it would do with sugar. Because Diet Pepsi tastes like malted battery acid. Is that not yours? Huh? I'm, I'm aware. Malted battery acid. I am well aware of that. So are potato chips. Do you think I don't eat them? Right? What, what's so confusing? Just because you know something is bad for you doesn't mean you don't do it. It's bad for you to sleep too much. It's bad for you to drive a car to 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee, but we all do it. The reason that is there is because there's a six pack in my fridge when Ms. Purvis used to live in this room one block a day. And a couple of days ago, I was very thirsty and I did not feel like water. I felt like some pop and the only pop available were baby cans of Diet Coke. So I had a baby can of Diet Coke. There's five more in there. They've been there for a year. I haven't touched them. Why? Because diet pop is evil. If you drink diet pop for dieting purposes, it's evil. Because it's not helping you. All right. And of course, C, again, we couldn't do it. Without a calculator, we'd get a weird answer, right? And we'd all be good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is all there is to it today. Now listen carefully to me. 
you will notice a crap ton. Page 57 has work, 58 has answers. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the work that goes with rational exponents. Now, the next page, you will notice, starts putting everything together. 59 and 60 and 61 are review that we are going to do together. All right? We will start that. Today is Tuesday. We will do that. We will do that tomorrow. Um, and then you will notice 62 and 63 have a crap ton more exponent practice because this unit by the end of the year is always the one with the lowest class average. It doesn't matter where I put it in the year. I used to do this as the third unit in the year. It did not help. Then I moved it to the last unit in the year. It did not help. Then I moved it to the first unit in the year. This year, it did not help. It does not matter where I put it. I cannot figure it out. I don't get it. I don't know why. I teach it a slightly different way every year. I watch other people teach it. I ask other math teachers how they teach it. I ask my students what worked for them. I have been working on trying to teach this. I see your hand. I have been working on trying to teach this unit for 20 years. And I still end up with trouble. The only reason I can find for it is lack of practice. So I have applied, as always, I have given you tons of practice. I also know that a great many of you won't do it. But I'm giving you fair warning that this unit every year is problematic. And every year kids come to me and say, go get extra practice. And every year I say, did you do all the stuff in your book? And they say, no. There's your extra practice. If you do it, great. If you don't, it's on you. Okay, so today, right now, you're going to work on page 57. The answers are on page 58, right? And I'm going to come around and get your scores from you from the last quiz. This should quite comfortably take us through today and leave you with no homework. <clears throat> Tomorrow, we do 59, 60, 61. In class, you work on 62, 63. Thursday, the day that I will not be here, you will have that block, all 60 minutes of it, to work on the review for this unit. We will mark that review Friday, we will start the next unit Friday, and at some point next week, you will write a test on radicals and exponents. That test could be in any class next week. Any class. Don't, don't say what you're going to say, because I know what you're going to say. I've done the jokes, too. You know I mean math classes. I am not going to get you to write a math test in your Block D Social Studies class. All right? And once again, I do the jokes here. All right? Go.